Suppose that you have two programs, one with computation time a n, this pink line, and the other with computation time b n, the green curve, where the height of the curve represents the amount of time it takes to process in data points. Which of these two programs would you rather have? For a while, it seems like a n is the worst choice, but after a point, it's pretty clear that b n overtakes a n and continues being much larger than a n for a while. In other words, b n scales worse with the data. So I think we'd rather have a n if these are the two computation times. The whole idea of asymptotics is in comparing growth rates of sequences and functions. We say that a n is big O of b n, or that a n is equal to big O of b n, though that equal sign is not quite used correctly here, if there exists an integer k and a real number c, such that for all n past the threshold k, the absolute value of a n is less than that multiple c of b n. This definition is really technical, so I think it's helpful to have this other formulation, which says eventually, this eventually signified for the n greater than k part, a n does not grow faster than b n. That's signified by the uh, inequality involving a n and b n. Here our k is probably somewhere around here and c is equal to 1. All right, our first step to understanding big O relationships is to get down this basic hierarchy of functions. The constant sequence 1 is big O of the base 2 logarithm of n, which is big O of n, which is big O of n times the base 2 logarithm of n, which is big O of n squared, which is big O of any higher degree polynomial, which is big O of the exponential function 2 to the n, which is big O of higher order exponential functions, which is big O of n factorial. n factorial grows very, very quickly, as you might have seen in a previous video. Uh, a word on the base 2 logarithm of n in these videos. Whenever we write down log n, we mean log base 2 of n. And if you want to get an idea of how big this is, it is roughly the number of binary digits in the expansion of n. Notice that anything in the hierarchy is big O of anything to its right. When you have a upper bound on your growth, which is what big O relationships are talking about, you actually have a lot of upper bounds on the growth. So let's take, for example, the function log n, which is big O of n cubed. Log n appears here in our hierarchy. n cubed is between n squared and 2 to the n, so log n is big O of n cubed. However, this is not the tightest big O relationship we can give, so we probably wouldn't do much with this statement. All right, now we know what to do with the basic functions. Here's how we put them together to make more complicated functions and understand their big O relationships. If a n and b n are both big O of some sequence c n, then so is a n plus b n. This is our addition rule. In other words, you just need to look for the largest term. Little a n is big O of big a n, and little b n is big O of big b n, then their product is big O of big a n times big b n. In other words, growth rates are multiplicative. That's the basics of understanding big O relationships. In the next video, we'll do some examples.